I'm in need of an x ray. X ray, x ray. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new. My name is Donna from axorattack.com and I help you go from the classroom to the x-ray room <laughs> with ease. I know you all haven't seen me in the x-ray room for some time. We also know I can't record everything so it's a little difficult when you're in the medical field and you, know, you don't want to really be filming and stuff as well as I can't film patients in general, right? However, today is a bit different. I won't be recording any like procedures or anything like that. However, we are celebrating 300 subscribers strong here on YouTube. I'm so grateful for all of you and I'm really thankful that you all took the time to subscribe and engage in the content and stuff like that. And to do a mini celebration, um, I told you all to ask me anything. Some of the questions I'm looking at it across on my laptop there. Some of them are uh, a little more general. I thought it would have been more specific, but I mean, it was cool. So yeah, I'm gonna just go through what you all asked me. And yeah, thank you again so much. And let's get into these questions. Okay, so I have my list of questions. I actually have my laptop here because it's after hours in the general department. So I'm like, why not just use this time because God knows on a regular shift, or like an accident and emergency right now I would not have had that pleasure so let me make use of the time when I have it right so I think I'll go in order as I said there aren't that many questions I heard a sound so I had to get up to go see what that was because it's me here alone okay you are still not being propped up by the computer all right I'm starting my classes of radiology next year. Any advice? Okay, so I think one of the biggest takeaways for me personally, if I had to do this all over again, was to not neglect, not necessarily neglect, because that's a big word, but to not take for granted the simpler imaging. So like when I did imaging one and two of like basic, basic, anatomy like of the hand or um labeling the forearm and that kind of thing i didn't take it honestly as seriously as i did later on in the program so i wish i would have done that because i feel like after some time i had to go back and review all of that because i didn't take it seriously the first time around so it didn't get to stay in the long-term memory and you know as we did the first general extra and stuff we look at a lot of bones and we need to know the different parts so one piece of bone might have like five labels the other one might have about 20 don't talk for the skull you know it's like a million and one things so that's one of the things i would say right of course you'll be starting off at first with your original not original wow your, your core or introductory level type of core courses so like your anatomy and physiology your physics and stuff like that those are really good foundations to have so don't take them for granted and study it just as hard as you would as if you study any more technical fancier things later on in the program be open-minded don't let um like clinical supervisors and other people like not everybody is super fun and outgoing and super helpful there will be sometimes I come across people who just not helpful or who seem like as if they don't like students you know it it happens wherever you go but whichever country it really doesn't matter right so I would say it's a be open-minded focus on your goal and don't let the actions of other people or other students like deter you or or demotivate you from getting where you need to get especially during the pandemic it's still going on even a year later um, it will be difficult to sometimes get into different clinical sites or you might have to hold out a little bit of that or just do like lab classes clinicals it wouldn't necessarily be easy like at all like at any other program but just like stick to it and you'll be fine slightly switched up the angle just a little bit right the next question is the hardest part about Radtech school. It's a two for one. Well, it's a two questions in one. 
What is the hardest part about Radtech School and what modality is your favorite? So for me personally, the hardest part of the program was Radiation Sciences. I think a patient is coming. Let me check. No? Okay. Yeah, so the hardest, the hardest part for me was Radiation Sciences because that dealt with like the biological effect of radiation on tissues. So for me, that was that was a heavy, 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 heavy course. However, it was doable. I mean, I passed it. Um, so there's that. Thank God. Um, but yeah, that was one of the most difficult things. Um, clinical practice to me wasn't as bad because yes, in my previous point, I mentioned that I didn't take like the anatomy, the simple things as seriously and I use that term loosely because obviously I took the program seriously but I did not study as hard and study as in with like with as much intention um, as I learned to do later on so that's kind of what I meant there but yeah radiation science radiobiology that was the hardest thing I remember stressing so hard Valentine's Day came, couldn't even go on a date because I had class and there was no way I was missing a class for that course, <laughs> right? So yeah, that was, that was something else. However, I mean, everything else was pretty okay. A lot of the courses took a lot of work, but they were all doable, you know? And my favorite modality, um, I have a few. Ultrasound is kind of like the stepping, like, another stone to step on if to put it that way um i do like mri a lot of course mri physics with t1 t2 weighted images and all of that the physics behind mri is technical however i do like the modality um as you can see my favorite modality does not include radiation interestingly enough however you know and i mean general lecture is cool too it's just that general lecture is the first step you know, you would want to specialize, like anybody would want to specialize at some point. And for me, I think the next step is ultrasound. Do check out my last video, radiology versus ultrasound. You might find it interesting, but yes. My next question was, which do I prefer? Nuclear med or radiation therapy? Like if I had to choose, would I be a nuclear med tech or a radiation therapist? And this question I thought was really, really cool because I actually have never thought about it before. Um, so this is me actively thinking about it. Nuclear med will deal with uh, using radioactive materials and tracers and that kind of thing. I don't see myself doing that. I don't think that's for me. Radiation therapy, probably. I feel like if I had to choose, I would choose that because then I actually for a moment considered doing a master's in biomedical physics. Um, so that's where the kind of radiation therapy thing will come in. But yeah, I think I'll choose radiation therapy to be a radio therapist, radiation therapist. But that was a good one. I actually never like put those two up against each other. So thanks for that question. Did you always want to be a rad tech? yes and no when i was younger like really really young i didn't know what like x-rays were i didn't know about that field so when i was younger i was envisioned myself being a teacher or a doctor or something like that but then when i was 12 i had to have an ultrasound taken and then i was like hmm i was talking to my mother and i was like you know this video is really good this is really really cool like i don't know what the person was seeing on the ultrasound but it looks cool like to be able to figure that out right and then like maybe a couple of years later or not too long after my mother introduced me to radiography and i was like oh. and then so from since the time i was about 15 i knew i wanted to do it so when i finished school at 17 i applied for the program so yeah i actually had another question asking what made you become a rat tech so yeah, that's the story behind that. So that was a two in one. Kill two birds with one stone. We all know that saying. It's a little morbid, but yeah. <laughs> Next I was asked, what are some tips that I would give to a student in transition? Wait, that I would give someone in who is in transition of a student 
Tatek. Right? Um, for one, you need to check out my blogs on axtoradtech.com as well as, well, obviously, subscribe to my channel. But no, serious, like, seriously. Um, I would say that you need to have a strong theoretical knowledge, like theory, book, quote kind of thing. Because then, and only then, he would feel very confident on a field, on a, like a work field that was not said well. Have a strong base in your position and your anatomy and all of that. Because when you go on site to work, somebody that you know being paid, you would feel confident enough to get the ball rolling. Because when you do start working, you would feel like rusty. You wouldn't feel 100% confident, but you would know your work, so you wouldn't really have to worry. Over time, it will come even more naturally than when it was, you know, when you were a student. So yeah, just, you know, keep your confidence up and just do, I mean, you know your work, you graduated, you have your license to practice, so you're good to go. I was asked, what is the salary of a rat tech? And I don't usually like to answer this question. Well, the staff and salary, right? I don't usually like to answer it because it varies based on where you live. Like for me, I do not live in the US. So me answering that is like, I'm not in the same like country as majority of people might be. I would generally say though, you get paid well above average. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, like literally from Google, right? Um, the average salary is $62,280 per year, but depending on where you live and depending on your um, qualifications, like if you specialize, like CT, MRI, etc., then you would be making way more or maybe making less based on where you live. If you're from the Caribbean, the prices will be different too because remember the value for dollar will be a little more different right so it's really hard to say some places like some private smaller private places might pay less whereas the bigger private institutions the more established ones will pay more and then public health governmental stuff will be average normal good but could be more so i'll just leave it at that you know it really does vary based on where you live based on what country you're from what um, your job spec is because there are some clinics that only do x-ray others do portables and all that while wow, people talking but yeah it, it really does vary so this next one isn't really a question but I feel like it's an implied question the person you call I'll be leaving all this stuff on top because I don't want to butcher anybody's name and yeah but this question um, well this message was changing from RT into another imaging field. So that's kind of what I'm going to right now, kind of, with ultrasound. Um, even in general, changing from general x-ray to MRI or CT or whatnot. It's not easy, especially if you are not from one of those major countries like the US or UK, Australia, Canada, you know. It's difficult because your local program likely is not going to be recognized. If you're already from the US or you're already in the place that you know you're going to live at forever, then it's easier. You know, it's just a matter of getting into the program, looking for the accreditation status of the program, and uh, you know, just betting it, you know, seeing if it's right for you, and adjusting. Like, take into consideration everything. The workload, the quality of the program, the quality of life, your salary in the future. Just to figure out if it's the right match for you. So, yeah, that's what I would say. So, this one is not a question. And they literally said that. Not a question, but appreciation for your quizzes. They are helping me study. Thank you so much. I only have one literal quiz though. Unless you mean like blog posts. But nevertheless... Thank you so much. I appreciate you for appreciating what I do and for you know, being here. So thank you. Oh, like 
the light is literally above my head. So this one is, is their tutorial on how we should greet the patients and the proper questions to ask. I don't have a tutorial on that, but thank you. I think I'll be making that extremely soon. That might be my next video as a matter of fact. So thanks for that. The next question was, what is my least favorite projection to do? And I was going to be basic and choose a scap y, but honestly, a lot of the time, scap y, scap y, wow. A lot of the time, scap y, scapula y, work out pretty well. Um, but this projection is not my least favorite because it doesn't work, but because I personally find it's a hassle and the other projection or the other method of it is way better. So let me show you. So, TMJs, temporal mandibular joints, right? The axiolateral oblique modified law method is my least favorite projection because you have to worry about angling or tilting the head the proper amount of degrees to get everything in profile nicely, right? Of the TMG. And I don't really like it. Whereas I can do the Schuler method and keep the head in a true lateral position, which is way simpler and less like headache and easier for the, the patient to hold because sometimes they like to twist, twist and turn whereas I could easily see if they change this position or not right and angle my tube accordingly because with the modified law you angle in the head and you still have to angle the tube so like what's the point what is the reason you know <laughs> so yeah I like the shoulder method thankfully I don't have to do TMJs too much so we started in the room so I guess I should probably end up in the room. I don't know. But here we are. And it all comes full circle. So the last question I had, so mind the bin. <laughs> the last question was, step me through a retrograde. Now at first, when I saw this message, I was like, what? <laughs> like being honest, I was like, what? Then I was like, I wonder if they mean like a retrograde, like, well, first I was like retrograde, like Mercury, because I know like people who like to talk about astrology and so. But I was like, but wait, that's not what this Q and A is about. So then I was like, oh, like a retrograde pilogram, a retrograde cystogram. That would definitely take some review on my part because since graduating, of course, you know, as students, we would do like assisted um, fluoroscopy cases. However, I have not done any since then. And that was like very early 2019. So I would need to review that in all honesty, as well as just in generally, just wow, you can tell that I am tired. Um, in my job, we have to specialize, or go, not necessarily specialize, but we have to cross train. So I have not done my cross training in fluoroscopy yet, so I may not be able to give you like the ins and outs and the like tips and tricks like how I would give it x-ray and theater and that kind of thing. Um, however, I can do like some more review in order to bring it to you all in a, like a less stressful type of way. But if that's what you want, do let me know. And I would consider talking about floral cases, maybe not like those. But like the IVPs and the barium swallows and that kind of thing. So thank you so much for being here and sticking it through this entire video if you did. And I will see you all in the next one. And thanks so much for subscribing and being a part of the hashtag RadTechFam. <laughs> so yes, 